I had a session with a friend of mine yesterday who I've known for years, and I've always uh, realized that her knees are kind of extended when she stands. Uh, so if you look at her from the side, uh, her knees would be back, and her hips come forward a little bit, and she's going to be obviously arched. She never really had any pain, but what was interesting, I saw her maybe on uh, Wednesday night, and she told me how much pain she's been in recently, and this is kind of a new, a new thing. And Of course, the first thing she did was not call me. She got injections, because she works in a hospital. Uh, so she got injections on both sides, on uh, probably both SI joints. And I, maybe it helped ease the pain a bit, but at any rate, I saw her Wednesday night. I yelled at her for not calling me, obviously, since she knows what I do. And so she came to see me yesterday. So what we saw when I tested her, interestingly, she had no neck pattern, no upper body pattern, which was really interesting. All she had was a pelvis forward on the left. So she was in her typical left AIC pattern, left side, right side. So her left side was rotated forward, right side was rotated back. The whole thing was oriented to the right. But she had no upper body. She had full horizontal abduction, full internal range of motion. Her neck was good, so it was really interesting. I didn't expect to find that, but that's what it was. So we could pretty much figure out that all her back pain was coming from this pelvis. But it wasn't just that the pelvis was forward on the left side, because again, almost all humans, until they get, if they go do some you know, PRI sessions, they're going to be forward on that left side. What she had most was an inability to stand on her left leg without extending her knee, without locking her knee. And in reality, she was really hyperextending her knee. So here's my left leg. As she would shift over to the left side, it would lock. And if you see how everything just does this, and her lower back would arch. So here I am from the side. She would do this, an arch. And that's what would happen. And the interesting thing was, if you saw her kneecap, her, uh, her kneecap was out to the side. Uh, and she also realized that she bumps the table. If she's at a table, she'll, when she gets up, she'll bump the table with her left anterior pelvis, with her left hip. And it's because it's so far forward, that's what she's leading with. So as she leads with that left hip and keeps hitting it. So she intuitively understood all this. Uh, but what was interesting was, was this. Her, because her extended knee was so extended, she thought that was you know, kind of straight. So if we unlocked her knee and put it into an unlocked position, but not really bent, she imagined it that it was like this. So she was feeling this knee flexion, but in reality, she was hardly, she was basically straight at that point. But she's accustomed to hyper extending her knee when her weight is on her left side. And of course, that leads to an unstable left hip, really overarched back, and that's why that was really the, the issue with her pain. And so we really just did some standard things, repositioning the pelvis, but I definitely had to teach her to stand on her left leg with her left knee bent in this position to feel, oh, one other thing. When I asked her to feel or sense her weight on her feet. On the left side, she felt her left heel. This was before repositioning. She felt her left heel. Now that's odd. If I know her pelvis is forward on the left and that shifts her weight forward, she should feel her weight coming down more towards the arch, and that's what most people report. But she was feeling it in her left, in her heel. That's not, again, that's not what you would expect, and that's why I checked out her knee, and yes, if her knee is hyperextended backwards in compensation for a pelvis that's rotated forward, she could be feeling that heel, and that's what she was feeling. Once I, uh, we put a little paper towel underneath her left arch, had her f unlock her knee, had her feel the, the arch, the paper towel, and it was a completely different experience, and she really didn't know how to stand. She started to sweat. She, was very, she started to shake. When I had her bend her left knee a little bit, uh, without going forward, so she had to bend her left knee while feeling the left heel and side bend to the left. Again, she started to sweat. She was very unstable. 
So her left side was so unstable, the only way she could stable it was by hyperextending the knee and hyperextending her lower back. And that's how she was getting stability on her left side. And that's not uncommon to one degree or another. Actually, it's pretty normal. Uh, but she was just excessive. And I think she's going to be fine. We just did some typical PRI exercises, uh, left hamstring, left inner thigh, left glute medius. Uh, all these muscles will stabilize the left leg when her weight is on her left side. And uh, she was feeling better at the end of the session. I'm going to you know, catch up with her. And I think that's mostly what she's going to need. Uh, so the, the lesson for me, and I wouldn't have caught this years ago. And when I first started PRI, I would not have figured that out. I don't think I would have figured this out until about maybe a year and a half ago. If she said that, oh, yeah, I feel my left heel, I would have been great. All right, you're ahead of the game. But I realized that was not what she should have been feeling because she was hyper, but because her pelvis was forward. And then I looked at her, we checked out her knees, and sure enough, she was standing with a hyperextended left knee. That's probably something I not, would not have caught about a year and a half ago. But the more you study, the more you kind of figure these things out.